off the brakes for the show. Hello and welcome back to the Mike Pecky Coaches Show. I'm your host, Brian Dunseth. That's the coach, Mike Pecky. Mike? How are you doing tonight, my man? Doing well. I'm wonderful. Yeah. Uh, I asked you if you came from the golf course. It's a my very, salmon. My salmon. Yeah, it's a very uh, southern, salmon. southern East Coast golf attire. It looks great. Uh, thank you. I appreciate that, my man. Uh, airport is like a second home to myself, and now you, after the run that you guys have been on so far this season, just racking up sky yeah. miles yeah. on Delta the past month, which got me thinking: uh, What are the biggest airport Pe uh, pet peeves that Mike Pecky has. Okay. Um, before we get into that, I just realized something. Oh. After, what are we, seven, eight shows something in? Something like that, yeah, yeah. I never ask you how you're doing. Okay. I just say, good, how you, you know. Mike, how I'm doing you? fantastic. You're doing good? Yeah, I'm life? great. Yeah, kids How's the are baby? great. Sleeping like a champ. Through the night? No, not even close. But he's doing well. <laughs> yeah, no, kids are good. Um, you don't look like the, the, the postpartum dad. No, we, he's a good baby. Good. I can't complain. Like, yeah. I, I sleep well. I actually sleep worse on the road. That's how weird it is. Wow. You need that crying in the background, huh? Yeah. All yeah. right. Thanks, enough, thanks enough for about asking. It. Oh, my pleasure. I realize am I being rude. <laughs> Pet peeves. I will, where's the camera? Right here? I'll tell you this. <laughs> Anybody who flies with me and sits in a row behind me, don't get off the plane before I get out of my seat. That is my biggest pet peeve. I've actually had confrontations really? on the plane. Like, where are you the, going, bro? The person behind me yeah. is just waiting, 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 and I'm trying to get out, and they go, oh, my God, drives, drives me nuts. crazy. And then the middle seat, the middle seat syndrome. If I sit in the middle seat, I get both armrests. Really? Oh, of course. So, I, so you're just going to command it? I pre-board, sky priority, yeah. whatever it is, get on. So you on, get elbows up. Get everything ready. Okay. Elbows in there right yeah. now. And, and lock and in. It, and it's not the elbows in here. It's the elbows out and comfortable. Like over the top? But when I'm on the long. aisle or window, you tuck. that's mine. That's mine. So, But you have the one arm tucked in. Or whatever side's into the middle. Into the middle? Yeah. No, that's mine. Okay. If I sit on the outside, that's mine. Okay. That's mine. Same thing. All right. It's terrible. All right. So a lot of people probably wouldn't want to fly with me. But uh, I, I, those are my, that's my one pet peeve, getting off the plane before me okay. when you're behind me. And the other one is the middle seat. Okay, so I have a list of, <laughs> of different, different examples of pet peeves. You talked about the middle seat guy. Uh, how about watching video without headphones on guy? The shoes off <laughs> by the lady with her feet on the wall. I had that lady the other night. Yeah, absolutely. The crying weird. baby, you always feel bad for the parents involved in that. Uh, that won't stop on a four-hour flight. No, uh, but that, what about, that bothers you? No, no, no. I'm just saying potential pet peeves. Yeah. I'll go through the list. What about Matt Gash snoring and then waking himself up even with his noise-canceling uh, Bose headphones on and then, like you guys, uh, the, the guy that gets up and tries to rush off the plane and he's in seat 22. Well, Matt Gash, for those who don't know Matt Gash, he's sitting right over here <laughs> and uh, he works for RSL and he's, he's awesome. Um, I make sure that he sits way away way from me. Way in the me, back, I heard by the toilet. A, heard about his snoring, for sure. <laughs> but the ba baby thing doesn't bother me. Yeah. I think since, you know, being a dad, kids. I, I put myself in that situation and I've been there. Okay. My kids were flying since they were born, you know? So a little birdie told me, Mike Pecky, that you were the guy with your shoes off on the flight to Orlando. I take my shoes, of course. Really? You don't take your shoes off on flight? Never. I take my shoes off the second I get in, but I've never put them up on a okay. seat or on a thing. Or like on the handle, like I'm doing. You know when you get up to 35,000 feet, everything starts swelling. You do know that, don't you? Yeah, no, I get that. Yeah, I, I need but my what shoes if, do off. You, do you, are your socks fresh? Like... No, my socks are 12 weeks old. <laughs> I mean, what do you mean are they fresh? Brand new pair every time. Brand new shoes. Look at these shoes. Those are, those are Look smooth. Look at these shoes. Those are smooth. Brand new. Yeah. No, I take my shoes off every time I have to. Okay. I've got to be comfortable. Obviously, okay. if it's less than an hour flight, I don't. But don't, don't, don't judge me for taking my shoes All off. Right. So I'm, don't, I don't judged try to change you. the subject. I totally judged you. You so did judge bad. me. How can you so, judge me? So here, here's, a, here's a random one. We were having this conversation earlier. What's the acceptable flight time in the air before a person is allowed to Drop a deuce in the toilet. I will be, listen to me, I just flew to Africa, okay? Yeah. In the off season, we know yeah. that. The flight on the way back was 16 hours. That might be, I flew to Japan in 1999, no, 1993, four, whatever. Those, besides those two flights, the longest I've had is like to Europe, you yeah. know, six, seven hours. Nice and easy. I have never, as what you call, dropped a deuce on an airline. Ever. Ever in my entire Ever. life. In my entire life. Okay. There's a couple of reasons for that. Yeah. Okay? First of all, I have control over my bowels. 
Second is that I am what some might deem, especially my kids, a borderline on the top, a top echelon borderline germaphobe. <laughs> I'm crying right so now. So I can I <laughs> I can never. I'm the guy that walks into the bathroom. Yeah. Seat goes up like this. Okay. When I go hands and wash touch. when I wash my hands, yeah. flush goes like this. When I wash my hands, I use I have, you have to use your hand to turn yeah. it on. Soap and water. This with the with the um, paper towel. This take the paper towel. Turn off the faucet, <laughs> get the next paper towel with the arm, open the door, hold the door with the foot, crumple it up, chuck it, uh, out, uh, germ free. Clean That's who I am. Dealers out. Dealers, Dealers out. out. So I've never, I've never performed really? that act on an airline. Okay, okay. Ever. So there's what, still time. What would be what would be the acceptable amount of time on a flight for anybody else? Because the worst is when you walk in and there's just a heater, you know, you're walking into that, <laughs> that you smoke see, screen. Hold on a second. Did you see it was over the last month or two that an airplane got diverted? Because, it, because of yeah. the smell? Yeah. You, 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 yeah. Do you yeah, really yeah. see that? I'm literally, I'm still crying. <laughs> you are, you're I'm right. still crying. You're right, I, I, I do, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, the acceptable amount of time, it's tough for me to answer because to me it's, it's over 16 hours because yeah. that's the flight that's I took and I didn't. Okay. Um, I, listen, you got to go, you got to go, okay. all right? But courtesy flush is for sure, Okay. I don't I want to get like, detailed. If I anybody feel like courtesy, courtesy flushes, flushes. you're going to get sucked into the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little but, bit But, hey, too that blue stuff in that bathroom, oh. even when you walk into the bathroom before anybody's used it, it's such a powerful aroma. It's disgusting. So yeah. I feel like that'll kill any smell. So whatever that guy did in the airline that diverted it, wow. Yeah, maybe, He's maybe go to they the were out of the blue stuff. He's got to go to the doctor. Oh, right that's there. amazing. Um, you had, you, <laughs> we really just talked about it. Yeah, no, I had to. <laughs> that, that's how my mind works. I was going to say... What about the farting guy as oh. well? The guy who's, well, the he's like this, thing, he like, he, he, he adjusts the air vent. But no, 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 but the interesting thing back. about the farting guy, as you, as you call him, yeah. on an airplane, there's so many people there, it's literally a coin flip of who it was, <laughs> of who it was. The and fog. everybody, everybody's just like this. Nobody wants to acknowledge it, right? You know, but Isn't I, I acknowledge it right away, even though it wasn't me, by yeah. the way. It wasn't me, but I'm like, oh. But isn't it crazy? So I want yeah. everybody to know that it yeah. definitely wasn't me. Yeah, it's, but it's crazy like how everyone is like. <laughs> and then you see the guy first go with like his, his shirt it's over the nose. Yep. And the other guy kind of like turns away. Dropping then, subtle hints. Yeah, yeah. Like, come on, man. Lock yep. it up. Lock it up. So at but least, if you're on that, listen, some people have different bowels yeah, no, and different gastrointestinal yeah. things. You know, you got to deal with that. Like Tim Weaver. Perfect example. Uh, let's transition. You had another moment on social media this week caught my eye. Uh, this was down in Orlando. Um, they, they had done such a great job with these seats after the Pulse nightclub shooting. Uh, your, t your tweet, respect, period, equality, period, end the violence, hashtag Orlando United. Mike, in uh, today's politically correct and politically charged climate, um, what... I don't want to say what makes you do something like that, but I would imagine before you tweet that out, there will be a certain amount of at least understanding that there's a chance someone might come back to you or come back, come at you about that. Interesting you started that. I could care less, and we'll get into that, I'm sure. I could care less if anybody disagrees with that or, or anything along those lines. Short answer of why I did that tweet. Um, obviously, it's in, it was in my mind, mm -hmm. way in the back. I'm coming to Orlando to play a game. Um, I knew very, I was very aware of the rainbow seats and what they stood for. Yeah. Um, but walking into the stadium, it wasn't on my mind. Yeah. Um, and I remember walking in uh, for training the day before, and everybody's going, getting the soccer balls out, kicking it, and just I was just taking the stadium in, looking around, looking all around, and it caught my eye, and it just literally hit me because I put myself back in the moment of that day. And A, I had no, I'm not here posturing. I, I had nobody who was affected from that as far as somebody there. Um, you know, I, I, I didn't have any connection to it other than the fact of how terrible it was. Remember my wife and I sitting uh, to the TV that day and watching it? And it was, just an, it was just an interesting feeling because I just went from thinking nothing about that training, the next game, to those rainbow seats yeah. and what they stood for. And um, for the rest of the practice, uh, I was obviously in tune with the practice, but my mind just started going many different ways. Um, and then after training, I just, I, I felt I needed to, and I'm not a very 
openly political and activist person. I have very strong views on a lot of things, yeah. but I've never really put them out there. And I don't think I've put anything out here, to be honest with you, which, I'm sure, which I want to get into as well. Um, but again, it was just the power of looking at those seats. You could see him on TV. I remember the opening game of Orlando when they talked about him, showed him, did the backstory. And, um, but there's nothing like sitting there and, and, and looking at them yeah. and knowing what they stand for. So I wanted to go in there and I actually had to ask somebody who worked there, because uh, I didn't know this, are those seats for people or are those like vacant seats for uh, the people from Pulse nightclub? And he said, no, people sit there. So then I, I went and sat there. I didn't want to sit there if yeah, it was yeah. not. Disrespectful. And I had somebody take a picture and, you know, it wasn't a long thought of what to write. It was just simple, you know, respect the quality, you know, stop the violence. Right. Um, hashtag, because on it, it says Orlando United, which is awesome. And, and that was it, to be honest with you. And there's a lot more for me to go into, but uh, that was the short answer to, to your question. You and I both have boys, young boys, that are transitioning into men. And a lot of times, you and I have talked <clears> kind of <throat> privately about respect and the impact um, and, and really the lack of respect we see in today's world. Uh, how does something like that in that moment also trickle down to you being a father and having two young men that you're raising in this world? A lot, you know, that was part of the thought process during that training. Uh, my mind just started going to uh, a lot of things, you know, and one of them was that I have the hardest job in the world, as you do, right. as, I don't know, 100 million people, however many people in this world do uh, as a parent, as a father. Uh, I have two young boys and, you know, it just, Brian, another thing is it, it just doesn't make sense to me some things in life, you know? I think yeah. I've said this comment many times about less, a lot less significant things, but some significant like this. I just can't imagine myself, much less anybody else, walking down the street with my son and my son says, why is that man holding another man's hand? Uh -huh. Or you know, to take it further, why is that man wearing that, that thing, the turban on his head? You know, and for me to turn around and say, because they're different and you have to stay away from them. Mm. It doesn't make sense to me. I have a lot of rules, and we talked about this before the show. I have a lot of, a lot of rules, but, but, but one major one is that, is that you treat everybody the way that you want to be treated, and you don't judge somebody by either A, what they look like, or B, you know, what they're doing as far as not everything, of yeah, course. Yeah, yeah, if yeah, yeah. someone's walking around with a schwa sticker on their head yeah. and, and spewing venom, by all means, judge them and stay away from them. But I, I just, I want to raise my kids that they can make the best possible decisions when they're not under my roof, mm. you know? And they have clarity, you know? My kids go to Catholic school. My kids were raised in a Catholic church. Uh, we could maybe save another show about how I feel about religion, all right? Uh, but at the end of the day, if when my kids are 18 years old, if my son comes, o comes home and says, I've done a lot of research on Judaism, I've done a lot of research on the Muslim religion, um, I want to become a Muslim, you know? Hug, you've made your own choice because, again, to go back what I said before, to, to judge somebody by holding another same-sex hand or to judge somebody turban to say that, oh, because 9-11 they flew airplanes into uh, towers, <laughs> that all Muslims are bad. Mm -hmm. that, to me, that, 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 that's ridiculous, yeah. you know? So I, I just, I want to set an example for my kids, but it's also very much my beliefs, you know? I, I feel that everybody, I mean, the Bill of Rights or, 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 the, or the, um, the Constitution, you know? All men are created equal, you know? Everybody has the right to life, liberty, to pursuit of happiness. Mm -hmm. You know, why would, why, would, why, why, why would a man or a woman who is gay what, what, why, why does that bother people? Mm. You know, you could get into the biblical form of this and all that stuff, but they're happy. They found something that makes them happy, mm. you know? So it, it just doesn't make sense to me. So that, that's the longer answer to it. And I probably said more than I should have, to be honest with you, but it's the way I feel. So you, you brought up something that touched home for me. Um, for those that don't know, my father, proud gay man, came out um, in really a tough time. Mm. And I was 11 years old when... I asked, you know, Dad, are you gay? And he asked, you know, why are you asking? What do you mean? Would it change how you viewed me? And I'm, no, absolutely not. Because it didn't change anything for me. He was still my father. Yeah. Um, and I split my time between Southern California and above the Castro yeah. in San Francisco and Hamburger Mary's and, and having this whole different cultural experience as a, as a, as a young person. 
Um, and to your point, my boys, my, my boys don't know anything different. The, the idea of it, it's, 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 it's grandpa. Yeah. It's everybody, you know, it, it's, they love him to death. It's yep. their grandpa. They don't, nothing's changed. Um, so it, it's, uh, when you think about LGBT and, and, and the world that we live in now, is there, is there any personal connection for you when you, when you, when you look at kind of the, the influence that someone like yourself can have? I, I don't, it's tough for me to answer. I, I, I don't, I don't look at it as that I have influence. Perhaps I do, mm. you know, per, perhaps I do. But I mean, listen, I've worked with a lot of, uh, a lot of gay men and women. Mm. Um, I have a cousin who, who's gay that I went to high school with and same age as me and saw the firsthand things that he went through. Yeah. Um, but as far as my stature or, or, or influence or whatever, I'm not trying to influence anybody. Perhaps I am. I, I don't know, Brian. You know, this is the first time I've really talked about something like this publicly. But I'm a very simple man. I'm a very black and white man on a lot of things. And I just don't understand certain things. I don't understand yeah. how somebody could be judged by holding another hand. I don't understand how somebody could be judged by the color of their skin. Yeah. I don't understand how somebody could be judged in a negative way by their religious beliefs as long as those religious beliefs aren't some new made up one that, <laughs> you know, the, the, the basis of it is to kill everybody, yeah. you know, then, then obviously. But I, 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 I just honestly feel that I wanted to put this out there. Yeah. And, and it wasn't an agenda why I sent that tweet out. It was a reaction thing. And you know, I'm a very reactive person, yeah, yeah. but it's not obviously picked up some steam. I've gotten a lot of great messages. I've not gotten any negative yet, but by all means, send them my way and, and we'll discuss. And, and you know, I just want to set an example for my kids because it's the way I believe. And when they get old enough, if I've raised them right, hopefully they'll believe in, 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 in good things. Uh, what we also saw this week was RSL homegrown Corey Baird's tweet, uh, which you can see right here. Uh, well done, Corey, is, is your response. And, and Corey kind of going down that path of, of uh, looking to really support uh, big picture that we're talking about yeah. individuals on a daily basis. Um, do you ever find yourself questioning whether you need to address something like this inside of the locker room? Um, there, there, there's been one or two times which I'm not going to yeah. speak about, you know, with, with, with the group, one time as a group and one time with a very key player over my career coming to me and asking me an opinion about making a stand on something. Mm. Um, the reason why I wrote back to Corey, um, well, well done or well said, was first tongue in cheek joking is because Corey doesn't say boo. <laughs> and to all of a sudden see him come out with this powerful, powerful, powerful message, I was extremely proud, you know? Um, but the other thing was is that I want, my, I want players and I want not just my players, all players, anybody who's in a situation that they have followers or, or they have the ear of, of, of people. As long as that message is right, you know, and a lot of people can dictate in their own mind what's right and wrong, but yeah. I feel that it was great what he wrote. And I just wanted to tell him, hey, well said, buddy. Yeah. You know, that's it. We didn't talk about today at practice. Maybe we'll talk about it tomorrow. Maybe I'll bring it up to him. If he, if he would like to come talk to me, uh, more than happy to, but I might bring it up to him because I'm proud of him for saying that. Um, I'll, be on, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm a bit disappointed uh, that we haven't seen more players that are comfortable coming out well, after, people are... okay, sorry. Uh, after Robbie Rogers came out yeah. first openly gay professional athlete yep. and soccer player a few years ago. Um, I kind of have this theory and I've, I've tested it out in a bunch of different realms, but soccer locker rooms are, are kind of, I don't know, the most welcoming, understanding, professional setting out there in sports. And mainly it's because of the background makeups. You think about the language, you think about the culture, you think about the religion, you think about the sexuality, just to touch on a few. Yeah. Uh, and, and how many times, um, both you and I, we've never talked about this, but have played with players that mm -hmm. feel comfortable enough to trust you with their own personal story yep. and their own personal journey. Um, kind of your take over the years of, of growing up in Major League Soccer, transitioning from a, a young person into an adult and now into management, um, it, it, does that theory kind of stand up of how diverse and accepting you see locker rooms nowadays? Absolutely, you know, and I've come across certain things, you know, in, in almost 20 years, and I'm trying to think of a time that it was handled in a negative way, mm. you know, so I, I think it's wonderful. But I also, I'll also say this, 
is that I, I kind of get, especially in Major League Soccer, while maybe not a ton of people are very openly about their views on whether yeah. it's sexual orientation, whether it's gun control, because yeah. those are hot topics Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right very now. judgmental, yeah. You know, and, and I've found myself as well over the years, not, not now, obviously, because now I'm speaking my mind and I will continue to, um, but, you know, contracts, you know, all that stuff. You know, how is this going to go over with my owner? How is this going to go over with the fan base and stuff like that? And, you know, I've always lived my life with, with being honest to people. There's been many times that I've chosen not to put something out there, but if it was asked, I've always been honest about. Yeah. Um, but I, I get that, that, that dilemma that maybe some players get. But we're in a world right now. I mean, we're in a world right now that you know as a father as well, and I'm sure many parents, if not all of them, realize that there's a lot of things going on, yeah. not only in this world, in this country, mm -hmm. that have to be addressed. And I'm not saying they have to be addressed from everybody uh, so socially or, or, or on a grand scale, but to your kids. Yeah. There's no Just hiding. There yeah. is no hiding from certain things. I mean, you could turn on, e even on a, a kid's show on Disney that my kids watch, there's topics of, 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 of yeah. certain hot button issues. Yeah. You know, so you, you're, you're forced into that. So I think that I think that the more that people speak out and they do it in the right way, um, without an agenda, uh, agenda, that's my East Coast, agenda, <laughs> uh, without, the, without an agenda, I think it, it's only going to make things better. Um, we've talked about a couple of really uh, interesting topics that I think a lot of people are um, not just hesitant, but a bit fearful uh, to have this conversation. Um, I guess it's my hope as we continue to kind of talk about this tonight, that everyone will feel just a little bit more comfortable, especially yeah. inside that locker room. Um, because as we both know, uh, LGBT world is, needs as much support as possible. Uh, but, I, uh, and, and again, Brian, I'll say one more statement, is that it, it's pathetic in a way that it does need that much support. We're in 2018, yeah, no, yeah. you know, we're in 2018. And it, it, it just, you know, another thing I want to say is that years ago I had a run in with a casual friend, I guess you could say, not a close friend or anything. And um, he started spouting off about a couple of things. And I asked him a question and I said to him, I said, all right, you get a, a person of a different color in the room. You get a person of a different sexual orientation, um, different religion, and you put um, a hood over them and you have a conversation with them. And, and they're all great. Like, how do you know? Like, just just from yeah. looking at them, Visually is that's judging. why? Yeah. That's why you're judging them? Like, this is the world we live in? And I remember how powerful it was because we went back and forth. And I, I know I got through to him. And, and I wasn't, I'm not a crusader, you know? It was just one of those moments that he said some things that I didn't like, yeah. and we got into a debate. And you know you got through to him, but he, 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 wouldn't, he, wouldn't, re, he wouldn't relent. Yeah. And, and that's a lot of people in this world that we're dealing with. Well, open and honest conversation. Appreciate Love it, man. It. Uh, see you again next week.